The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that God is still active in the world? Walter Brueggemann, Old Testament scholar and theologian, says something rather remarkable. He says, few of our people, meaning people of faith, Imagine God to be an active character in the story of their lives. And I suspect he's right. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that we don't believe in God. It's more that day in and day out, God seems to most of us is fairly passive. You know that if if God is doing anything, it's pretty much in the background of life, watching, waiting, being supportive, encouraging, kind of like the refrain of the Bette Midler song of a few years back, God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. Well, that's not, of course, the biblical picture of God. Sure, God watches, but God also gets involved directly. God does things, all kinds of things, great and small, mighty, mundane and miraculous. God puts on overalls. God rolls up God's sleeves and with blood, sweat, and tears, is not afraid to mix it up with the world and those who live within it. God is constantly at work. But even more than that, God doesn't like to work alone and regularly uses other people to accomplish the work that God does. So take today's gospel reading, for instance, where the angel Gabriel bursts unexpectedly into the life of an unsuspecting teenage girl named Mary to tell her that she has found the favor of God and will conceive, carry, and bear the very Son of God. Woo! Talk about news. Well, before we jump to Mary's response, let's consider what happens for Mary before she finally says yes. What happens between the angel Gabriel's greetings favored one and Mary's, let it be according to your word. So that we hear what we hear in that in-between space is that Mary is perplexed, she's confused, perhaps even troubled by the angel's words. And how could she not be? I mean, she is, as she protests, still a virgin and just a teenager. Moreover, she's common, ordinary, of little account in her world, and definitely not the stuff of legends, and she knows it. And I'm sure she even wonders, if I'm the favored one, why is God doing this to me? Well, only after expressing her wonder and dismay, and then hearing again Gabriel's Gabriel's affirmation and promise, Does she manage to summon the courage to believe that God is indeed blessing her as one of God's favorites and working in her and through her for the salvation of the world? And here's where I want to go back to my original question. Do you believe God is still active in the world? 
Because if we do believe that, then what we discover in this morning's Gospel reading is that when God acts, such as entering the world through the birth of a child, then God does so through the human element. In other words, God does very little, if anything, apart from our participation in it. So do we think God is done interrupting people's lives to use them for the sake of the world? Or might we imagine that God is still doing things just like what we read about in Luke's Gospel? Because if we say we believe that God is active in the world, then God must still be using persons by which that activity takes place. So I wonder who those persons might be. You know, might we look around at the people in our congregation, the people in our lives, and see them as those persons who are also God's favorites and through whom God plans to do marvelous things? And would you ever consider your very own self as one of God's favorites that God would use to accomplish the very plans God has, if not for the world, then for the lives of your loved ones or those in your own backyard? Perhaps not conceiving and bearing the Son of God, but so what? That's, that's been done already anyway but something as equally meaningful and significant. Nah, not me. Mary was extraordinary. God would never use someone like, like me, like God used Mary. You know, I'm nothing special. I live my quiet little peaceable life. I couldn't possibly make, an indif- make a difference in the vast scheme of things. Well, I gotta tell you, that's exactly what Mary thought Later on, when she visits her relative Elizabeth, she sings the Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant. You see, Mary didn't consider herself special. And as far as her station in life, she was part of what Bible scholars call the Anawim. She was part of the poorest of the poor of Israel. And yet God chose her to be the bearer of the greatest gift of love the world has ever known. Well, do you believe God has more gifts of love to offer the world? If you do, then who shall bear these gifts? Through whom will God send to a broken and hurting world God's very self that heals and helps, comforts and strengthens? Through whom will God set free those held captive by oppression and injustice? Through whom will God end wars and establish peace? If you believe that God is still active in the world today, can you also acknowledge that God's activity requires you and me in the same way it required Mary? Now here's the thing, when God comes to ask, we, we might also be perplexed, confused, perhaps even troubled by the proclamation that God has noticed us, that God favors us, and that God has wondrous things to accomplish through us. And as Mary took those few moments to ponder, reflect, process, so we too might need the time and space to let it all sink in before we offer a similarly faithful, here I am, Let it be to me according to your word. You know, you've already done this. You're actually pretty good at it too. As a matter of fact, you're doing it right now. God's spirit came to you. God's spirit came to me and said, I would like to start something brand new in Palm Springs. I'd like to create a river of hope in the desert, a faith community, a church of persons who have a radical understanding of inclusivity, persons who see diversity not as threatening, but as a valued gift, a people I will love. And I'll teach them to love one another in my name and to extend that message of love as far as they can. I want you to be part of it. I will do great things through you. Will you do that? but we are just ordinary, everyday people. Nothing special, Lord. Ah, God says, but you are among my favorites and the Holy Spirit will come upon you, guide you and work through you to care for this world and the people I love so much. For nothing is impossible with me, God says. 
confused, perplexed, maybe even a bit troubled and afraid. After pondering the invitation, you said, and I said, here I am, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the love of God was born once again into the world through the birth of a church. Do you believe God is active in the world? We've already answered that question simply by being here today. May we discover other ways to answer that question in our own individual lives and together in this faith community as well, because remember, you are one of God's favorites and God has a favor to ask of you. Amen.